how to pay zero dollars in capital gains legally. You're probably paying too much in taxes. And before you go crazy protesting that we need more taxes, let me explain. You know that feeling when you've worked so hard for something and you just cherish it? This could be learning a skill, saving up to buy a car, graduating college. Once you have these things, you do just about anything to keep them. The last thing you want is to crash a car that you just saved up for. I think the same goes for taxes. You've worked so hard to make money. Of course you want to save as much as possible. But saying, I want to pay less taxes is almost hate speech in some circles. That might be a little dramatic, but there's a whole lot of protesting. Taxes are good. We need more taxes. We live in a society. And yes, I agree taxes have a purpose, but I want to reframe taxes and the rules of taxation. And this blew my mind when I changed how I thought about taxes. I started thinking about it in a completely new way. And that is, what is the government asking us to do? Well, in the tax code, they basically have one line that says, all income is taxable unless we say it isn't. And then they have another line that says, no expenses are deductible unless we say they are. Then we have all sorts of charts and graphs telling us how much we should pay. But that's maybe 30 pages. The actual tax law is over 6,000. The other 5,970 pages is just a series of incentives and exceptions to get you to do what the government wants you to do. When you pay taxes, you have a partner. That partner is the government. So what does this partner want you to do? And how will they reward you for that behavior? In today's tax law, if you're paying any serious percentage in taxes, I'm gonna tell you something that might shock you a little bit. You're probably doing it wrong. You can choose to pay high taxes and the government is totally fine with that. Or you can partner with them, do what they want you to do, pay low taxes, and they're totally fine with that too. As long as you're following the rules set forth, you are doing nothing wrong. I personally would never demonize someone for going on unemployment, nor would I demonize them for trying to save a little bit on their taxes. Sure, an argument can be made that billionaires need more tax, but that's not what this video is about. I don't care about the few billionaires. I care about the average person who is paying too much in tax. So in this video, I'm gonna cover every top method for saving tax in your investments. Methods that can land you with as little as zero percent tax on six and seven figure profit. And again, this is by working with the government and within their rules. So normally when you sell your crypto or stock for profit, you'll pay what's known as capital gains tax. There's actually two major types, short-term capital gains and long-term capital gains tax. If you held for under a year, you'll pay short-term capital gains tax. Short-term gains is based on your income, which can be as high as 37%. And if you held for more than one year, you'll pay long-term, which is a lower percentage. And I I have some great news right off the bat for those in lower income brackets. You don't have to pay any long-term capital gains tax. In some situations, if you held an asset for more than a year, your long-term capital gains would be 0% as long as you had sold less than $41,675 in taxable profit in 2022. Now, this is before write-offs because we have capital losses as well. Anytime you invest in something and sell it for a loss, this can actually be written off against your capital gains. So here's an example. Your friend Clark, he's been a bit wild and reckless when it comes to investing. He threw $40,000 into two separate DAOs, promising a reasonable 9 trillion percent APY. One week later, he sells both of them. One dropped 50%, resulting in a $20,000 capital loss. The other increased 25%, resulting in a $10,000 capital gain. If he keeps good records, he can actually benefit to some degree from this loss. At tax time, Clark can write off the $10,000 in gains with the $20,000 and losses, you'll pay $0 capital gains tax on those $10,000 in gains. And now even better, he has remaining $10,000 that he can use to write off either against future capital gains or $3,000 per year against ordinary income. This is a must use strategy if you have any capital losses. Of course, consult with your accountant always though, because this is for entertainment purposes only. But losses, losses aren't exciting. We wanna know how to save against massive gains. One kind of extreme extreme method of tax savings is using a CRT. This is one of the few ways to save tax on capital gains after you've already made the gains, but before you sell. How this works is you have a lawyer set up what's called a charitable remainder trust. You send your assets to that trust, which is actually tax deductible because it's considered a charitable entity. Every year you get paid an annuity payment from that trust. This happens until you die. Once you die, the remaining funds will go to a charity that you determine when you set up the trust. But what about sending an inheritance to your kids? That's kind of one of the biggest points of making money. What many people will do is for their first few years worth of annuity payments, they will buy a life insurance policy 
with their children as a beneficiary. So the tax bill is reduced by doing this. You get payments for life. Your kids get an inheritance once you die and you benefit charity at the end. It's a pretty neat deal all around. I'll have a video in the description that goes even more in depth on this strategy. Now, next we have something a bit more controversial. It's called a deferred sales trust or a DST. The idea is you create a deferred sales trust and essentially sell the trust, your assets at cost. So let's say you bought $100,000 worth of Bitcoin and it's now worth $1 million. First off, congratulations. You would sell the trust, your Bitcoin, for $100,000 because this technically means you have no capital gains. Then the trust can do a variety of things with those assets like sell them, reinvest them, or pay you installments. Now, many people seem skeptical of this approach because it lands in kind of a legal gray area and it can be quite expensive to do. So to be honest, it seems like for most people, this wouldn't be the very best option, but I wanted to just highlight everything in this video. Now let's talk about something that's a bit easier to do and great either if you expect to see a ton of capital gains in the future, or if you're a frequent trader, this is amazing. This is called a self-directed IRA. So a self-directed IRA is a retirement account. Except being limited to specific investments like stocks or mutual funds, you're able to invest in all kinds of assets. This is actually what Peter Thiel did, and he has an account worth $5 billion that he will never have to pay tax on. That is, unless Congress forces him to do so, but th that probably won't happen. So with a self-directed IRA, you can place crypto directly into a retirement account. Let's do an example using a Roth IRA. We're investing $6,000 in Bitcoin, which is the annual contribution limit, into a self-directed Roth. You'll pay regular tax on the money going into the account, just as you would with any normal investment. But after that, you pay zero tax. Even if every single day, you trade within that account from one crypto to another until retirement. So you deposit $6,000. Let's say you traded your way up to $100,000 by the time you were 59 and a half years old. At that time, you could take your profit of $94,000 and pay no tax. If you'd done this in a regular account, you'd be hit with tax on every single profitable trade, lowering your amount with taxes every single time. Now, people might stay away from this because you can't begin pulling out profits without a penalty until age 59 and a half. But there's actually a loophole for this. I'm telling you, there is a loophole for literally everything. This is called SEPP, Substantially Equal Periodic Payment. This will allow you to remove funds from your account without penalty as long as you spread that over five years worth of payments. And this allows you for early retirement if you hit it really big. You don't have to wait till 59 and a half. Of course, please talk to an accountant if you wanna take any of these kind of more loophole type strategies. So what is it that you wanted to talk to me about? A few of the biggest providers for self-directed crypto Roths are Directed IRA, Alto, and iTrust Capital. Now, iTrust is actually a sponsor of mine, so if you like their offer, you can actually use the link in the description of this video and get $100 in free Bitcoin just for making an account. Now, next, I wanna give you a warning because a lot of people don't know this and it could cost you a lot of money. If you trade one crypto into another, say Bitcoin into Doge, this is treated like selling Bitcoin and then using the profits from that sale to buy Doge in the eyes of the IRS. So if you have a lot of profits in one crypto, just make sure to take careful consideration before you sell it or swap it into another crypto because that will be a taxable event and after you sell the cat is basically out of the bag it's much harder to save tax at that point now, i did some digging and i found a horror story on exactly this from a reddit user it's bad at the advice of his friends he took his savings and bought about 7200 dollars worth of bitcoin back in early 2017 and it worked fantastically for him it jumped up to about 120 thousand dollars but then he got caught up in the altcoin frenzy and sold his bitcoin for some altcoin coins. Little did he know he would then owe income tax on those trades, which added up to about $50,000 in tax. And this would have been fine, but the price of crypto crashed and his stack dropped from $120,000 to about $30,000. So his portfolio was worth $30,000 and he had $50,000 in tax. Now, yes, he should be able to write off some of the capital losses here from those bad trades, but that's not a situation that you wanna be in. Now, remember how I said after you sell, there's not much that you can do. 
Well, that was a bit of a fib. There is something you can do with your profits, but it's a bit more of an active approach. This is using your profits to invest in opportunity zone real estate. So remember, the government is our partner and they're willing to incentivize us to do what they want us to do. The government wants more investment in areas that they deem to be economically distressed. And you can save a ton of tax by doing what they want you to do. Let's say you were sitting on $1 million in long-term capital gains on Bitcoin. If you were to sell outright, you'd have to pay 23.8% tax. So $238,000 in tax. But if you were to invest the profits into a qualified opportunity fund, a QOF within 180 days of your Bitcoin sale, you can save big on tax. But this depends on how long you're willing to keep your money within the fund. The first is tax deferral. Investing your profits in a QOF means the taxes are deferred until either December 31st, 2026, or when you sell the QOF position, whichever comes earlier. If you keep your money in the fund for at least five years, then 10% of your profit will then be tax-free, meaning you'll now only be taxed on $900,000 in profit instead of $1 million in profit. At seven years, 15% of your profit is tax-free. But remember, you still have the tax on the profits from your new opportunity zone investment because that is ideally appreciating in value as well. However, at 10 years, you can completely avoid the capital gains tax on the appreciation of your opportunity zone investment on top of your 15% savings on the initial profit. And the idea is by the time 10 years goes by, you've been able to earn far more money off of that opportunity zone investment. Now, again, this is a bit of an advanced strategy, so please talk to a tax professional. Next, we have something I'm very familiar with. So in 2012, Puerto Rico launched a tax incentive program allowing people to pay far lower taxes after moving to the island and after first doing a ton of paperwork. The idea is that these incentives will bring highly productive people to the island to help stimulate the economy. I don't know if you know this, but I moved to Puerto Rico in 2021. And I can attest to the tax incentives, the fact that they're real, but there is a lot that isn't talked about that I wish I knew beforehand. So on face level, there's two major programs. Export Services, which offers a corporate tax rate as low as 4%, and the Investors Act, which offers capital gains as low as 0% for gains made after you move to the island. My appeal was on the Export Services side. So the 4% tax, that's real, but you also need to figure in paying yourself a reasonable wage at regular tax tax rates, city taxes, business licenses, additional very expensive accounting, far more rules and guidelines to follow within the taxes, an extremely long and expensive application process, and a higher cost of living. So all in, the true tax rate is probably more like 8 to 12% depending on your level of income, which is amazing. Don't get me wrong. However, all the time I'll hear people say that it's just a flat 0% tax and all you need to do is just move there and you're good to go. It's not quite that easy. It's absolutely worth it. I'm extremely grateful for it, but it's not that easy. On the capital gain side, it is a bit more simple. You still have additional expensive filing fees and things like a $10,000 per year required charitable donation, which I think honestly is a great aspect. And that program offers 0% capital gains tax on gains made after you establish your residency within Puerto Rico. If that makes sense for you and your lifestyle and your finances, I couldn't recommend Puerto Rico enough. It's pretty awesome. Now, let's finish off with the most extreme and probably impractical way to avoid the oversight of Uncle Sam, simply giving up your US citizenship. Now, to do this, you'll need to have citizenship from another country. And luckily for you, some countries will just sell you one. <laughs> for example, Antigua and Barbuda will sell you a passport for $100,000, and you'll just need to be a resident for five days. And the overall process takes about three months. This will allow you to travel to 150 countries visa-free, which isn't bad at all. For ultimate travel freedom though, you'll probably wanna go with Malta. Malta offers 182 visa-free countries, but you'll need to fork up around 750,000 euros and live there for a year. I tried to find some stories online of people who actually did this, and it turns out one of the guys who created Facebook and Jet Li both did this. However, even this doesn't mean you avoid current taxes. If you hit any of these criteria, you'll actually have to pay taxes on assets even if you don't sell them before leaving your citizenship. This is called a mark to market tax. Now there are certain exclusions and exceptions to this, but the point is you're not going to avoid taxes completely 
on your exit. So as you can see, navigating taxes is often a matter of understanding what the government wants and their rules. Once you know this, there are all kinds of creative angles that you can take to pay a more reasonable amount of tax. If I missed any strategies, make sure to comment those down below. Also, if you'd like even more content, access to my portfolios and buy alerts and free coaching, make sure to join my Patreon linked in the description below for as little as $10 a month. Let me tell you, there is a ton of effort that goes into that community like a metric ton. You'll love it. Also, check out the video on screen for a more in-depth look at crypto taxes. I would like to thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a profitable day. And that, Lauren, is how taxes work.